let's go to the math. Uh, my pleasure to, to introduce our first speaker, um, Enrique Sa Saerp, who will talk about, um, sorry, harmonic flow of geometric structures. Enrique? Enrique is out of good Wi-Fi. <laughs> can you can you hear me well? Now now we can. All right. Uh, uh, so let's give it a try. Um, uh, we tested the sound before, so I think we should be fine. Um, so greetings, everyone. The situation is highly unusual. Uh, I normally detest slideshow talks, but I thought given the circumstances, I will use a, use a slideshow. I'll try and speak a little slower so that uh, uh, different connection <laughs> um, bands can, can follow up. And, um, but, I, but, but I can also, I have a whiteboard here, so questions are welcome and, and I'll be able to explain them as, as in a somewhat realistic seminar. So please ask questions and let's try to make this uh, uh, as normal as possible. Uh, also makes me wonder if I may, uh, why we haven't done this before. Uh, so that's some pandemics learning opportunity uh, uh, for all of us. So uh, let me uh, override uh, Marcus, who's just made a mistake. And, um, and let's get to the, to the business. So Jorge, can you please confirm you, you, you guys can see the, the, the first slide? Uh, yes, we can. Great. Maybe you should hide, hide the, um, the other cameras because there is a black thing on the on the right yeah but that's that's okay that's because of the format that's that's the way it is okay okay so uh today i'm going to talk about uh, harmonic flow of uh, geometric structures this is joint work with eric lubo and in particular, I'm talking about the version two of the paper, which has just come out. So, so this is the paper on the archive, the preprint. But uh, there's a, a new revised, uh, hopefully, final version now. So, so there will be some. Um, if, even if you've heard some of this talk before, there will be some uh, some new consequences at the end. And and the the, the second version is uh, has been streamlined in various respects. The arguments have been cleaned up a bit. And I hope it's more readable now. Um, and I'd, I'd like to share the whole thing with you. So uh, in terms of motivation, so where, 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 where is this discussion coming from? Uh, we're looking for a, a theory of harmonicity for geometric structures, right? So let's look at what these terms should mean. So by, by a geometric structure, typically we mean a a section of some of some tensor bundle, which in some sense is stabilized by a subgroup of the structure group of your of your manifold, right? So it's a, so the geometric structure corresponds to some symmetry, and this manifests itself as being stabilized by a subgroup. On the other hand, uh, by harmonicity, one usually means considering maps, say from from Riemannian manifolds and assigning to them some, some energy, some, some Dirichlet action, uh, which is normally the, the, the L2 norm of some, of some derivative, of some suitable derivative of this map. And then look at maps which lie in the critical set uh, as the harmonic, uh, as the harmonic uh, guys in your, in your theory. All right, so we're going to try and make precise how to assign a harmonicity to geometric structures, and then how to derive an analytic theory from it, which can, can, can bring new conclusions. 
Now, the idea of, of, of looking at harmonic geometric structures is not new. Uh, this all started with, uh, I mean, from my perspective, it started with works by Chris Wood, and then uh, a number of people, including a comrade Salvai from, uh, from Argentina here, uh, who have, in a way or another, stated more or less the same framework, the basic framework from which we start. Uh, so we, we take it from there and we try and push it forward from the analytic perspective uh, by studying the associated flow. So uh, we begin with a closed connected Riemannian manifold with structure group. Let's say the structure group is just uh, SOM, a fixed metric. Then for us, indeed, a geometric structure will be some section of a tensor bundle, which is stabilized by a subgroup of the structure group. Now you can choose the example, your preferred example, say almost complex structures for UN, uh, almost contact structures for UN odd. Uh, there's a lot of exciting uh, recent work on uh, G2 structures and why not uh, um, spin seven structures and, and whatnot. Uh, the key, uh, the key um, space to consider here is the uh, reduction of the uh, overall frame bundle, let's call the frame bundle P, and uh, consider reductions uh, given by H. So uh, if H and G are a reductive pair, then I can take this fiber-wise quotient, let's call it M, and uh, this, uh, this gives me a fiber bundle, uh, no longer a principal bundle, but it's, a, it's still a fiber bundle over M, and then can argue that uh, uh, the original geometric structure as a tensor uh, is equivalent to a section of this uh, homogeneous fiber bundle. Now, there are a few there are a few characters in the story. So first of all, if the natural projection of this of the homogeneous fiber bundle is called pi, then there's a natural vertical direction, uh, which is tangent to the to the fibers of pi, and uh, as a result, we can define a notion of a vertical torsion just by projecting the differential of the map onto V. And this will be our differential for the purposes of, uh, of analysis. So the Richley energy is going to just be defined as the integral of that, the L2, the, the L2 norm squared of that uh, torsion. Uh, now, indeed, once you assign a if, if the total space uh, now has, a, has a, a natural metric, a suitable metric, eta, then it, we can use its Levi-Civita connection to further differentiate and indeed take the divergence of distortion. And uh, this defines the tension, the vertical tension field. Uh, the, reason for taking, the reason for taking a vertical component is that uh, one can show easily, just as for harmonic maps, that the horizontal contribution of the energy is, is just a constant, it's topological, right? So the only interesting part of the energy is this vertical component. And indeed, if you carry out the, uh, uh, if you look at the variations of the Euler, uh, the Euler Lagrange equation of the Dirichlet energy, indeed find that the critical set consists of the, uh, uh, of the sections with zero vertical tension. So we, that's what motivates us. Uh, 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 to, call, to, call, to call a section harmonic. And indeed, if it has no torsion at all, then, then we'll call it, of course, torsion free. Uh, now, in each context, the, 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 the vertical part of tension, the vertical tension takes very different forms. And working out what its, what its concrete form is, is, is uh, in some sense a non-trivial exercise on its own. Um, it, it characterizes, I mean, it, 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 it gives you a, natural geometric PDE, and it's a condition that's typically much weaker than integrability, uh, which, however, still picks in some sense the best geometric structure in a, in a given class. So uh, even when uh, in situations when we know that uh, integrability is obstructed or, or it's trivial, um, it still makes perfect sense to look for the best geometric structure in terms of its harmonicity. All right, so that's that's the motivation for, for these concepts. Now, what is it that one can establish uh, 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 from there? So, uh, to be precise, now 
we, um, we assume the, the structure group is a complex semi-simple Lie group with a bi-invariant metric eta, and H is a normal reductive subgroup. Um, now P is a principal G bundle over the manifold. Let's assume it's just this frame bundle. And let's, assume, and let's consider a, a metric also noted, denoted by eta on P, uh, uh, induced from the, uh, from the uh, invariant metric on G. So it's a fiber metric on, on P. And the condition that this is normal reductive, this is a normal reductive pair, is precisely to ensure that such an extension exists. Uh, then we define the natural gradient flow of the Dirichlet energy, which we call the harmonic section flow, uh, and consider uh, uh, manifold uh, product of time, the evolution, the natural evolution problem coming from the harmonistic condition. Uh, so what is it that one, one is able to prove in full generality? So in, in any such setup, uh, first of all, we obtain a short time existence. That's uh, what I'm calling theorem one. Um, and the main theorem uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a description of the blow up rate and long time existence. Now, uh, for people familiar with this, uh, with this vocabulary, with, with the geometric flows, in some sense, theorems what is completely expected, right? This, this is the thing one should set out to prove uh, when looking at any uh, geometric flow, this is the, this is the program one would follow. So, in some sense, the the, the take-home lesson here is that in this very general setting, uh, uh, these properties remain true. Of course, in in specific contexts such as uh, G two structures or um, or uh, um, almost complex structures that have been recently studied, I'm going to talk about that soon. Um, this is this is very well known. The, so, so theorem two essentially theorems one and two is essentially generalized uh, uh, to the broader context. Uh, 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 a number of things which are known uh, for in, in for specific cases, right? So if we call epsilon of t the sort of energy density, and epsilon bar its supremum at each instant, then we have a control over the blow up rate. Uh, there's a maximum time to the flow, and indeed it's a sort of doubling time estimate in the sense that, uh, uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, the initial the initial energy density uh, uh, controls the, the uh, rate at which a solution can eventually blow up. It can blow up, but not arbitrarily fast, uh, as controlled by the initial condition. Moreover, if, if uh, the flow fails to be extended, then this, if there's a maximum, fin a finite maximum time, then necessarily the energy density blows up along with, along with the solution. Another way of stating this is that if we have uniform control over the energy density, then the flow must exist for all time. At least passing to a subsequence, let's say. So now uh, let me dig in and try and uh, uh, outline how, how one goes about establishing these, these results. What's the machinery in this theory of harmonicity of geometric structures? So this is going to be a little, a little bit technical. If you want, you can just look at the diagram and we can convention uh, uh, the letters. So, so we have the fiber bundle P over M. Uh, it factors by H. Uh, factors through this uh, fiber bundle N. Points of, we, we respect alphabetic order, so points of M, N, and P are denoted by X, Y, and Z, respectively. So, for instance, points Y in N correspond to classes of H-equivalent frames, okay? Just so that, so that this is clear. Now, hopefully you can see my mouse. So, uh, as we said before, the tangent bundle of N splits into vertical and horizontal parts, and because we're considering a reductive pair, then uh, the total, the, the Lie algebra of the uh, structure group G splits into an irreducible a component H and its complement M. Uh, now, if we consider the bundle, the natural bundle with fiber M over N, we denote that by M underscore. 
This is the bundle which consists of uh, ve vectors in the classes of vectors in a frame, right? So the H classes of, of, of vectors in a given frame. So uh, the way to think about the way to think about M is the sort of space where elements of V take coordinates, right? So the fiber of V is actually a vector space. The fiber of M is not, right? You linearize in some sense the fiber of N it has two parts, one that is irrelevant for us and the one that is relevant for us uh, uh, is described explicitly in sort of coordinates in a given frame by uh, an element in the fiber of underscore M. Indeed, this isomorphism can be made explicit. Uh, uh, so basically uh, what you should take from here is that I, calligraphic I, is the isomorphism that attributes coordinates in M to elements of V. Now let's linearize the previous picture. Let's look at the tangent picture associated to the previous one. Now, by having a connection one form on P, we can look at its projection onto M, right? So connection one form on P is in one form. So, so it's a G valued, uh, the algebra G valued one form on P. So in particular it has a component in M and by using the identification we had before, we can associate an element of the fiber of underscore M, right? Uh, and in those terms, uh, here's what we can define. So if sigma is a section of the bundle, of the, of the bundle, the fiber bundle N, then its differential takes values in TN and its vertical part takes indeed values here. Therefore, we, we can consider that in abstract uh, as, as an element of V taking values in V and measuring its norm with the, with the natural metric. And that, that is indeed what defines the Dirichlet action. But moreover, if we want to deal with it explicitly, then the isomorphism I needs to be computed explicitly. That's a, if you want to see what the actual geometric equation uh, is in terms of tensors and so on, then you have to uh, work out the isomorphism I. That's, that's how the algorithm goes to determine what's the geometric PDE described by this by this condition right so this is a condition in v if you want to know what it looks like in terms of the tensors on your manifold then you need to take the i image of it okay that's that's basically how this works so indeed the Dirichlet energy measures measures the uh the, the vertical torsion of, of, of sigma now we're using some maybe maybe presumptuous uh, vocabulary, but it's 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 just just to be precise. So I'm going to call a geometric vector bundle with respect to the frame bundle of a manifold, say, as a subset of the total tensor bundle. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be, in, in my opinion, doesn't have to be a necessarily a tensor bundle. But let's assume it is. It needs a more subtle property, which is the existence of this geometric representation. So. P is a principal bundle over M, a, G, a principal G bundle over M, then we need a representation of P onto the tensor bundle, let's say, uh, on, the, on the, the geometric bundle F, right? Such that essentially sections of P trivialize the fibers of, of F. Okay, that's essential to need. So if, if this is the typical thing, if F is a tensor bundle and P is the frame bundle, then all you're saying is that when you choose, when you choose coordinates on the base, then this trivializes uh, uh, every tensor bundle over it. So in particular, it trivializes the fiber over over, over uh, the fiber of F. So we denote the tip, th this typical fiber, this vector space, the typical fiber of F by V, and uh, and by R. Well, it's rank. So now uh, let's look at what that means. The existence of this representation takes a very concrete form. So at each point. What rho does is that it assigns to a frame of P an actual frame of F. That is a, a trivialization of the fiber that is an isomorphism of the abstract fiber of F onto its model fiber V. So now I'm gonna say that a geometric structure is modeled on some, on, on some element uh, 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 psi zero in this model fiber 
right? Uh, when indeed they exist, when, when this representation is actually subjective at the model, and this is just a very pompous way of saying what everybody knows, which is the, the famous property that at every point, there exists a frame in which your geometric structure manifests itself as the model one. So if you think of almost complex structures, you're just saying that there exists a frame at every point such that your J can be written as J0, the canonical, uh, 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 so J, the J0 matrix, or if it's a G2 structure, are you saying is that at every point there's a frame so that this is written as the Euclidean, seven dimension Euclidean vector cross product and so on. So this is just an abstract framework to account for what everybody has, the, the way everybody has been defined has been defining their favorite geometric structures so far. So now, so long as we, so long as we accept that this representation row is a way of, of assigning sort of G frames to the fiber of F, then we can stop mentioning it, mentioning it altogether. This just to explain where are we coming from. So now let's get a bit more concrete. So uh, in, in order to, to, to describe uh, my geometric structure as some sort of as corresponding to some symmetry, let's assume that the, what we actually want to assume is that the stabilizer uh, uh, of, of that, that psi zero is stabilized in G by some subgroup or some reductive, uh, normal reductive subgroup H, right? And then once you do that, then you actually define a what's called a universal section. So this big, if, if my little section is called, uh, if my, my section is called little psi, then large psi is uh, the, the, it's the, it's the, na the natural section of its pullback onto the total space of N by the natural projection. So, so my tensor bundle is here. I pull it back to N. I get this uh, sort of pi star of F. And there's a natural object defined here, a natural section of this vector bundle, which is just defined as uh, the pullback of the model form by the class of frames Y. So basically, all this is so the, it's a universal section because it knows all the geometric H structures, right? It knows all the H structures because each H structure, when given a frame, can be assigned can 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 be assigned to be. Uh, uh, um, I mean, e e each structure at each point admits a frame in which it takes the form psi zero, and that form doesn't change if you act by H. So this is actually an H class of frames, right? So this is well defined, right? This is well defined. It's uh, the form, which at the point X here, admits a frame in principle Z in which it takes the form uh, psi zero, but this is, this is actually an H class because psi zero is fixed by H. So this descends, this descends to N and it's a well-defined fellow. So now pulling back the section, so a typical geometric section here to a section of, uh, uh, of F. So pulling back psi here, uh, we obtain a one-to-one -one correspondence between geometric structures in these tensors and actual sections of N. It's just mediated by composition with the universal structure. So take a section, you compose it with the universal structure, it tells you which structure that section actually describes. Okay, so there's a correspondence between sections of the vector bundle F and sections of the fiber bundle N. Okay, and then of course we're going to define uh, uh, the, the geometric structure to be harmonic when the section is harmonic in the previous sense. Now, uh, so just recall, let's just recall that uh, so, so N can be thought of as this fiber-wise quotient of P. If you want to make it rigorous, it, this is actually the associated uh, construction of P by G mod H. So it's the bundle with fiber uh, G mod H. And this is the explicit isomorphism. Okay. Now, uh, what's uh, really important, and this is a, this is a lemma, this, this is a lemma by Chris Ford, is that it turns out that there's a correspondence between uh, 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 elements of G mod H and H fiber of N, which is an isometry, all right? So, so, so essentially the fibers are isometric, and that's, uh, so this, this is an isometry, 
right? So, uh, I mean, this, this bit is an isometry. So uh, the one-to-one -one correspondence I had before between sections of F, so geometric structures and sections of N, now the rigorous definition of P mod H is in fact four. So it's actually the bundle with the associated bundle with fiber G mod H, right? And the isometry mu from the lemma maps these fellows to G equivariant maps from the total space of P to G mod H. So G mod H valued maps are defined on the total space of P. If you compose all of these one-to-one -one correspondences, then indeed we can see that to each geometric structure that corresponds injectively, uh, indeed bijectively, a G equivariant map now from total space of P to the actual uh, uh, quotient of G by H, okay? And the whole trick of the analysis we carry on later is that the flow, the harmonic section flow for these guys, in fact, translates into a flow for the G equivariant maps. And that allows you to draw some analytic conclusions by looking at these maps. Indeed, you show that the, what does it correspond to? And if you, if you translate the harmonic section flow by the previous diagram, if you, if you chase it through the, the previous diagram, what you find out is that solution of the harmonic section flow exists all the while uh, uh, when a solution of the classical harmonic map heat flow for these G2, for these G equivariant maps exists, okay? So in fact, when you, when you carry out the associated construction, you find a G equivariant uh, 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 harmonic map heat flow, a harmonic map heat flow of G equivariant maps from P to G mod H. And, but then, then we can use standard technology to understand the harmonic map heat flow, draw conclusions as to when solutions for this exist, and then translate it back into the existence of a solution to the harmonic, to, to the harmonic section flow. Indeed, this is what we established here under the assumptions we've made of a family of solution, of a family is a solution of the first flow, and only if its associated family of geocovariant lifts is a solution of the classical harmonic map heat flow uh, with the corresponding initial condition. Now, we know that the harmonic map heat flow is parabolic. It also, it always has short time existence. So in particular, we derive trivially theorem one, the short time existence of solutions to the harmonic section flow. Um, indeed, so this correspondence is the key. In instead of fighting with some sort of abstract flow in a space of sections of a fiber bundle, we, we, we try and draw as, as much uh, information as possible from its cousin, its associated harmonic map heat flow of this very peculiar class of maps, these G equivariant maps. Now, uh, what, what can you get away with saying? So, um, there's a number of interesting things. So, uh, first one, I'm just gonna gloss over the details, but we, we carried out four applications. Uh, let me try and describe more or less what, what we achieve. So perhaps the first thing, the easiest, the easiest case to consider if you want to say, uh, do it as an exercise would be to consider the case in which the symmetry group is, is trivial in a very well-known space. So we took the Riemannian three sphere and considered the, whose, whose frame bundle is just good old SL4, and considered the, the uh, trivial subgroup given by the identity. What does that correspond to? It's an E structure over uh, the, the sphere. That means it's a parallelism, right? So each section parallelizes the sphere. Uh, each non-trivial, I mean, it's, it, 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 a section here is a global frame field, right? So it's a, it's a trivialization of the tangent bundle, i.e. a parallelism. And the answer says, what does it mean for a parallelism to be harmonic? All right, so we carried out the isomorphism I in this case. It's not, it's not, it's not very hard, but you compute that indeed uh, uh, it takes this, this, interesting, this interesting form. So this is the general form of the, of the torsion you see in equation six, that's the torsion. And indeed as a corollary of theorems one and two, 
we find out that uh, provided a, 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 a sort of L6 bound can be guaranteed in the solution, then you can flow the natural flow of any parallelism for all time and at least subsequently converges to a harmonic parallelism. And we derive, we derive the harmonic parallelism condition. It doesn't have to be very beautiful, but it, it is what it is, you know, it is what it is. This is uh, the, the harmonic condition for parallelism. Of course, being torsion free in this case would be much too strong, right? It would probably mean that as that the three sphere would have to be an obedient group. So that that would be unreasonable. And this in some sense illustrates what I'm uh, what I've said before. So in many cases, the torsion free condition is much too strong. We know from the outset that looking for torsion free objects is much too strong. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, so a torsion free parallelism would mean that the uh, would mean that the, the, the that S three is not only a Lie group but it's it's obedient, right? And so 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 we have a much more reasonable harmonistic condition, which is worth considering. And then in these the Hopf the Hopf vector fields are harmonic in this sense. It's just it's a very easy exercise to check that the uh, well known parallelism on uh, on S three is indeed the solution of this. Then one could ask, and ask a number of things. You could ask, are there any others? So there's there's a, a, a lot of work on on the study of um, on a, of, of unitary uh, uh, vector fields, harmonic unit vector fields on 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 on, on manifolds on, on on homogeneous spaces, in particular on spheres. But I, as far as I know, you, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I don't know if folks looking at actual frame, actual frame fields and trying to ask what is the best parallelism on the sphere. The second comment I'd like to make is that, of course, here we are considering the Riemannian three sphere, the round three sphere, but there's no reason not to consider uh, uh, more general metrics on, on the three sphere, which would just give you a different total space. You'd have to consider SO4 G for a general metric J, and uh, it would be very interesting to, to see how the harmonistic condition and the, the, the say the, the critical locus of the energy uh, uh, varies as you vary the metric. Uh, I don't think this has been done, and I think this is, should be interesting. Uh, last but not least, uh, there are only two spheres in the world for which this discussion makes sense, because only S3 and S7 are possibly parallelizable. So the existence of a global frame field only be expected to hold in S3 in, in S7. Now, if you if you uh, you can hold me on my word on this, the same calculations we performed to derive uh, the torsion six and the harmonistic condition in the corollary would work more or less uh, uh, seamlessly uh, on uh, on S7 as well. And then why not on S7 with maybe some some exotic metric? So all of that. All of that is up for grabs, and, and, and see, these are some of the lines we'd like to proceed from now on. Right, so I think even, even the most trivial example in the most trivial um, Riemannian manifold is, is, uh, um, leads to a not so trivial discussion. And I think that's, that's why, that's why I'm, I'm so interested by, by this topic, right? It raises interesting questions, even where you wouldn't expect any more interesting questions to, to come from. Now we can carry on with this. And um, I, as far as I know, this is also new. So the formulation of a harmonic flow for almost context structures, uh, I haven't seen it done anywhere. Uh, so this is the, uh, so we announced the, the, the horribly named, uh, outrageous, uh, uh, harmonic almost context structure flow. Uh, it takes this, this form for the red field and the almost complex structure, the sort of transverse almost complex structure on a, on a almost contact manifold. And indeed, we compute the torsion here. Torsion takes this, this form. It's this pair given by a J grad J and a grad of Xi. And indeed, if this is bounded in a suitably large LP norm, uniformly bounded along the flow, 
then indeed we have the same conclusion. So subsequently, at least, uh, this converges to a harmonic limit, and we also compute the harmonistic conditions in this case, which are these. And so it's a coupled system, right? So there's a separate, there's a separate uh, condition for J. Uh, notice that this is a sort of so there's an associated uh, there's an associated metric or uh, well, connection on uh, the bar. I won't get into the details, details in the paper, but uh, what it's saying is that J commutes with its Laplacian, right? So this is clearly weaker than J being parallel, uh, and uh, it makes sense even when J parallel clearly makes no sense. Uh, and the, here's a, and the, the, the first equation is coupled, so it involves the rev flow and the transverse and the transverse uh, structure, J. Right, so as far as I know, nobody has stated this flow before as a, as a proposal. Uh, we argue that just because this is a manifestation in the almost contact uh, context of the harmonic section flow, that it makes sense to study. It's the natural harmonic flow to study in this context. It doesn't have to look good. It is what it is. Um, but then a lot of the analysis, the fine analysis that we've seen uh, recently uh, about these, uh, about very similar flows, should also be carried out in this case and hopefully lead to, to interesting conclusions. We should look at solitons of these things. I think there's a lot of work to be done. Talk about that just later. Now let's uh, look at uh, even dimensions. So now uh, uh, the context is very similar. We're, we're, we're looking at almost com complex structures and even dimension. Then we compute the torsion and the torsion of J is sort of even dimensional analog of the of the previous torsion we had. And indeed, there's a natural almost complex structure flow, uh, which, which we, we can derive directly from HSF. Now, uh, this flow has been formulated sort of independently by her and, and uh, Lee uh, in um, uh, just last year. So all of, this, all of these developments are pretty recent in terms of the analytic theory of, of harmonic uh, uh, structures, of harmonic flows for these structures. Now, um, so uh, it, it should be said as a caveat that uh, in this case, so comparing with, uh, with the flows that have been studied so far, our results prove less, right? We cannot, we do not derive yet the epsilon regularity theory that uh, our colleagues have done for these other cases. It's the, for the moment, it's, it's much too hard still. Uh, so, so in the cases that have been worked out in detail, because the authors use uh, the specific representation theory in that case, and they, they're able to derive finer uh, estimates and to, 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 to reach higher. Uh, so well, we're not claiming to supersede what has been done. We're claiming to uh, propose a framework of generalization for those results. So. These, uh, these two authors have, that have studied this flow in a lot of detail, including weak solutions and so on. It's very interesting. And, but what we do can say is that provided the torsion here is uniformly bounded and indeed uniformly bounded in a uh, arguably outrageously large LP norm, but can, can replace that with, I mean, this, this is a slight improvement on C0 uh, bound then you still have the same phenomenon and you can, uh, 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 your flow converges to a harmonic, uh, a complex structure, uh, almost complex structure. Uh, this, this condition, by the way, was originally uh, derived by Chris Wood in one of his first papers. This was his case study. This was the, the context in which he outlined some of, the, some of the framework we're using. So we recover that, this harmonistic structure, um, as a corollary, as a as a corollary of the general theory. Now, uh, this is this is by far the the uh, instance that has generated the most interest recently. Uh, so, uh, and indeed, it was our original motivation to study this. This is how this is the case we set out to solve. So now we're in seven dimensions in a seven dimensional Riemannian manifold, and we're looking at. G2 structures on the Riemannian manifold, on the seven dimension Riemannian manifold. So a G2 structure should be thought of as a vector cross product on the tangent space of the manifold modeled on the 
imaginary uh, octonion, as uh, for just 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 as you would do on a three manifold with uh, with the quaternions. Now, because every you know uh, 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 good rentable uh, uh, three manifold is parallelizable, then it suffices to provide the quaternionic cross product at a point, and then you automatically have a vector cross product defined everywhere. But for uh, uh, seven dimensional uh, uh, manifolds, this is this is not the case. And indeed, uh, a choice of a smooth choice of vector cross products uh, uh, on the tangent bundle of your manifold is what's called a G2 structure. Now, uh, if you just treat that as a G2 reduction of SO7 of the SO7 principal bundle, the frame bundle of the manifold, uh, can we compute just by brute force uh, the uh, uh, Extortion. Now, what we find out is that uh, indeed the torsion looks exactly uh, like the the uh, sort of usual torsion studied in the context of G two structures. So in this G two geometry, the torsion is a sort of derivative, uh, covariant derivative of phi, and indeed the structure is called uh, torsion free, and the manifold is called a G two manifold when it's torsion free. Okay. So uh, originally, authors have been considering the so-called div t flow as a as a as a as a nice a natural isometric flow of G two structures. So it is true that every G two structure determines a metric, or it's, it's compatible with a metric at least which it, which it determines. But uh, uh, this is not one through one. So there's a seven-dimensional ambiguity in terms of uh, the G two structures that determine the same Riemannian metric, they're compatible with the same Riemannian metric, and we, we can call that the isometric class of a G2 structure. Now, uh, it's then natural to consider that, that it's a natural flow, uh, which we, can, we have learned from works of Sergei Gregorian, and then colleagues like Bagolini and Duvedi, Gianottis, Carigianis, uh, have studied in much detail the so-called div T flow, right? From, from a completely different perspective, so they don't originally picture this as a harmonic map problem. They are looking at a natural, they, 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 they look at the general form of what, what, what a flow of G2 structures must be. And then the, by imposing that it's isometric, then what you're left with is this div T contracted with the Hodge dual of uh, your G2 structure phi. Phi is a cross product, therefore it's, it's, it's a three form. So this is a contraction of a vector field with a, with its dual four form, right? So this is the, the, we know a lot now thanks to these thanks to these works. So Bagolini proved short time existence, and then Gregorian and uh, DGK proved a lot of interesting analytic properties of this. They looked at the formation of singularities. This is very thorough uh, recent work on this. Uh, however, uh, what we have shown is that indeed this div t equals zero. A stationary condition for the isometric flow is exactly the uh, harmonistic condition. If you think of G two structures as indeed harmonic, as, as just as tensors, as, as geometric structures per se, right? So if a G two structure is indeed a G two structure in our in our abstract sense, and you derive by brute force the harmonistic condition, you find exactly div t equals zero. So therefore, because we know a number of things about the abstract flow, then we recover the fact that if the torsion is uniformly bounded, then the flow exists for all time and it converges to a div t equals zero metric. So again, this is less than the authors have proved, uh, but it's uh, it's um, it, it, it derives sort of uh, sort of effortlessly from uh, from the broader perspective. Of course, in the future, we'd like to carry on uh, the rest of the analytic program. Let me tell you about this now. Uh, the way I see it, there's uh, four different directions in which one could proceed. And, and so there's a lot of work that one could carry out uh, uh, from here. So first of all, let the construction of examples. So the, the harmonic parallelism flow uh, and the almost contact a structure flow are new. We've just derived what the natural flows have to be. So can we look at examples, uh, uh, find find interesting harmonic examples with geometric significance 
on our favorite manifolds, just as in a way uh, the uh, Ni LEG2 matrix on the seventh sphere are indeed harmonic. This is very uh, easy to see. So are there analogs of these nearly nearly stuff uh, uh, objects in 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 the uh, ACTSF uh, in the ACTS uh, context, right? So so let's look at so so to look at these new flows and new harmonicity conditions. Now, of course, a different direction would be to choose other symmetry groups. For instance, uh, uh, powerfully mysterious uh, SUN, so uh, in which the uh, torsion-free uh, guys are the Calabi-Yau, but then if you look at what harmonicity means for these guys, and then spin seven, which I expect to look uh, very much like G2, but we have to work out the representation theory for it. Uh, I think the harmonistic condition would just be G of T equals zero, but uh, we have to signify these words. In fact, because this is the vertical part of the, the second fundamental form, in some sense, it's always D of T equals zero, but in this case, I think it will be the actual div and the actual T of, of uh, spin seven theory, spin seven geometry, okay? Uh, third, of course, the hard analysis bit, uh, the epsilon regularity. So we would like to be able to do better, slightly better than just asking the torsion to be uniformly bounded. In some sense, that's just translating in a fancy way the same difficulty, showing that the torsion is uniformly bounded. It's precisely the hard bit. Uh, and uh, folks, in the case of uh, uh, almost complex structures, in the case of uh, G2 structures, have shown various guises that uh, can define an associated entropy quantity and that uh, if the, en the initial entropy is sufficiently small, then you get a uh, uniform bound. That's because the dynamics here is sort of a reaction diffusion process, right? So in some sense, if you begin your dynamics with, a, with, a, with, with uh, not very much entropy or not very much energy, then diffusion beats the nonlinearity and your flow converges. If you start with too much energy in a suitable sense, then the nonlinearity defeats the Laplacian and, and you explode in finite time. That's the, that's the philosophy behind this theory. So this has been carried out um, in an excellent way by, 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 by these authors in their specific context and in our case, uh, the, main ch the main theoretical challenge is that, that we don't have, as far as I know, be very interesting to know, we don't have a theory like Chen Ding, uh, the fundamental uh, uh, theory for, uh, uh, for harmonic maps in the, in the 90s, in the Inventionis, famous Inventionis paper. We need that basic sort of monotonicity and epsilon regularity theory that takes into account the equivariance of these maps, right? That we, we absolutely, we absolutely uh, need the, the equivalence here uh, to intervene. Um, can everyone hear me? Or have I been giving this talk in, to a silent audience all the time? Are you guys still there? We can, we can. Good, so thanks. Um, finally, um, let's look at the uh, homogeneous uh, uh, problem. So. Uh, after a visit to uh, National University of Córdoba in uh, uh, our neighbors in Argentina, uh, I've, we've been led to think that a very, uh, a, a very rich source of case studies will come from the homogeneous manifold setup. So now let's assume that M itself is a more homogeneous manifold. Then let's look at what happens. So if you look at now just homogeneous structures, so totally symmetric structures, uh, which are essentially defined by their value at the identity in K, then, well, well, because the structures are invariant, then their L2 norm the, the, will, will be proportional to the pointwise norm, right? It just be proportional by the volume right, of the manifold. But we're we are studying a gradient flow, so the L2 norm is non-increasing, right? So in the context of harmonic structures, we always have long time existence because we always have a C infinity, uh, a C naught bound on the energy density, right? 
So uh, uh, this is this is this is great because uh, 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 the kind of intellectual program this could lead us to formulate this sort of uh, uniformization program, right? So the limit always exists, right? And we can follow as a template what Jorge uh, Lauret has done uh, in the case of Ricci flow, and then also for the um, Laplacian flow of G2 structures based on a general approach uh, in which a flow gets translated into, into the so-called bracket flow. And the bracket flow, uh, uh, in, the, in the bracket flow language, uh, it's uh, not too hard to pass to the limit and look at the limiting uh, uh, manifold as a sort of classification classification uh, uh, object for the for the, the broader class. Uh, an interesting remark here is that, of course, uh, the metric, the Riemannian metric on the manifold is is fixed from the outset. So you might say that's fine because, but this this is only flowing among isometric manifolds. Well, that's true. And the limit will also be isometric to M, but what's interesting here is that its structure as a homogeneous manifold may change. So the algebraic, so the, the action uh, 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 um, at the limit may change, right? So it's still, there are still non-trivial phenomena uh, uh, transitioning at the, at, when it passes to the limit, the, because the, the underlying algebraic nature of, of the, the, the Riemannian manifold changes. Right, so it's something finer than being isometric. Uh, moreover, we know we know that torsion-free in this homogeneous setting, torsion-free is usually asking too much. Right, so in several, if you're looking at these solved manifolds, for instance, uh, usually asking for torsion-free is just making the manifold flat. Right, so uh, uh, in, in general asking ju just as for just as for frames on the sphere asking we know from the outset that torsion free is too much that looking for the torsion free objects is 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 beyond what what, what uh, anything interesting that can be produced so let's say that this this is obstructed or trivial uh, however we can still consider this flow looking for harmonic representatives of classes and hopefully there will be a small number of harmonic uh, limits uh, living in this critical set, which would then allow us to sort of uniformize the general uh, uh, structures in the manifold. Okay, so again, uh, uh, Andres Moreno and uh, a number of other people are working on this problem for G2 structures now, so as a, as a first set, but I think it's a rich, there's a lot of room to explore here. Uh, in trying in, in in the various flows you get in specific contexts in terms of constructing examples of homogeneous manifolds to which they apply, studying the flows and hopefully getting an understanding of how these organize when you look at the limits uh, and what kind of uh, critical phenomenon occurs with the algebraic nature of your homogeneous manifold when you pass to the limit. All of this is uncharted territory and. I think it would be very exciting to 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 know what the answer is. I'd be very I'd be very pleased. So uh, please treat all of this as 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 a list of invitations. Uh, everybody is much welcome to to contribute in any direction they see uh, with us. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, and um, so let me finish there. Okay. Thank you, Enrique. <laughs> So, oh, is there any question? Any question? It's okay, you can ask questions. So, I have a question. Yes. Uh, curiosity, actually, you know, very nice everything you, you, you presented. I, uh, I don't understand much. But uh, my curiosity is, is it hard to, to incorporate the integrability into into this story uh, in, in the story you're telling. So you're talking about almost complex structures. So in this context, it's how hard it is to incorporate the integrability and talk about the flow of complex structures. 
deformations of complex structures? Well, that would be, uh, so first of all, let, let me add the remark. So Paulo corrected remarks that uh, we're, we're fixing the uh, structure group to be SOM. So indeed, it's an oriented Riemannian manifold. You're absolutely right, Paulo. That's, that's absolutely right. Uh, but Marcos, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's the study of, uh, of um, I mean, int integrability of, of a complex structure of an almost complex structure, thereby making it a complex structure is, again, is, is much too strong in general. It's a, 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 so harmonicity is weaker than integrability. So the, the integrable guys, if they exist, they live inside the critical set, but they are much, they are much smaller stratum, right? So yes, I thought, I thought you were gonna ask whether the integrability of some of these structures relates to harmonicity of others. So, let me act as a politician and answer the question I wish you had asked instead of what you actually, what you actually said. Okay. Uh, indeed, what I think is a very tempting prospect is to ask uh, uh, what happens if you have, a, uh, if you consider almost complex structures on the equator S6, the sixth sphere, the equator of the seventh sphere, this naturally induces a frame on uh, a frame field on S7. And you could ask, how does the uh, 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 torsion of the stream affect the integrability of the almost complex structure? If you could understand that, and indeed this is a problem we are working on right now, uh, then hopefully we could make some outrageous statement about possibility of uh, integrable structures on the equator based on things we know or might know about the existence of certain frames. Okay. okay, thank you. Is there any other question or remark? We have time. So in the meantime, if people, if people are late, can, can I just ask you to please subscribe to the mailing list if you haven't, it's here on the chat uh, to, to receive future announcements. Yeah, Lohan, do you have a question? Yes, uh, maybe I lost if I said that, but what do you get uh, if you use like uh, for Riemannian matrix, if you use SON on GL? Ah, well, first of all, uh, uh, the typical framework of harmonic maps is for fixed metrics, right? If you, if you allow the actual Riemannian metric to move, then the variation, uh, the variational problem of the, uh, the, the Dirichlet action gets uh, grotesquely more complicated. Uh, but this could be done. Uh, so your, your question is good, but my point is that it's, it's really quite hard. Okay, so so you could you could do that. You could allow the the metric to vary, and then decide what's the what's the uh, um, uh, so for for instance you could weaken to to GLN yes, and then and and then you probably get a coupled situation in which you have something like the 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 tension that we have plus some stuff uh, describing the 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 tension in the moduli of Riemannian metrics, uh, depending on how you control that, but that's quite hard. Maybe in the context of homogeneous manifolds, we could bring this to, uh, this to make sense again. In fact, this is, a, 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 I'm, I'm quoting now an idea that was outlined by, by Jorge to me when I visited him, but we didn't, we didn't develop it much. Uh, Yes, uh, that, that's a great question, but I'd say the, the problem is quite hard, isn't it? I see, thank you. Okay, any other question or uh, comment? Yes, I have a question. Hey, Shubham. Hi, how are you, Enrique? All right, man. Yeah, so the question I had is that uh, this uh, paper by uh, Rugang Ye and Lee on the harmonic section flow for almost complex structures, uh, do they also study like solitons for their flow? 
or do yeah. they have like any classification result for solitons or anything like that uh it's two papers it's it's a lot of material but they follow the same coding when you could see that the same the same sort of philosophy that you guys adopt okay and they see how far it takes them but they do they do the upside of regularity theory they look at weak solutions it's a it's a lot of good stuff in, in some sense they carry out your program for 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 almost complex structures and I it's all that. simultaneous it, it came out sort of weeks uh, 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 after your your preprint and Sergey's and and my work with Eric it all it all came at the same time it was completely independent i see i see so this is yeah. like so like something like lojas civics and equalities and things like that you like you mentioned colding and minicozy's approach so man it's it, it's uh, I, i probably don't want to go into the details of what they do because I've only I've only studied that paper from the perspective of uh identifying the things that I've generalized. I see. Okay. Uh, but but I do agree with you that we should we should look into more detail in terms of what should be done next in the general case because whatever works for you mm -hmm. and then works for them should should probably work in the general case. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they do for, for instance they do weak solutions. They they spend the, the second paper is just about the weak solutions. Okay, I see. Which you guys don't, I mean, you guys don't immediately. Right, right. Prioritize, right? Right. But they do the, in the first paper, they do the epsilon regularity uh, uh, in much the same way following the Chen Ding uh, uh, philosophy. Um, uh, so the first paper looks a lot like yours. The second okay. paper is is the sort of uh, weak solution analysis, but there's solitons in there. There's, there's lots in there. But I, I can't tell you exactly whether they've reached further than you have. Okay, yeah, yeah. If that's, that's if that's what you're asking, right? That's that's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I, I I understood what you're trying to say. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other question? Okay. In that case, we can thank the speaker again. <laughs> Thank you for sitting on the podium. Okay, goodbye. That's, that's